Please put your hands together. Welcome to the talk. The You all hear that? Yeah. Hi folks, uh, welcome, thanks very much Aidan for the introduction. Um, Aidan's already gone through the schedule for the day, um, so I won't do that. Um, just to give you a little breakdown of uh, ourselves, we started in the region of 2010, all, all of us here have all had our own experiences going back way beyond that. Um, to clarify, the Common Law Society is for us, for the people, basically, the men and the women, the men and the women in the country. Um, the primary focus of what we do is education, um, and we, we work in and around the legal area, finance, economics, so on and so forth. We do free events, schools, discussions, seminars, presentations, education material, and of course we do events like this. Uh, to clarify, um, we get asked like all sorts of questions, but to be, to be clear, we're not solicitors, we're not barristers, academics, judges, professionals, politicians, we're not affiliated or to our members of political groups, societies, parents, clubs, or organizations, we're just a group of people that come together and educate ourselves. So we're simple people that have chosen to learn and educate ourselves, and then to accompany that, we, we teach, we guide, we direct others to do the same and to protect themselves. Now I'm just going to fly through this because this is all pretty standard, so I think most people have heard this before. Um, in relation to the history we've had, in, in the issues we deal with, we've had a 100% success rate with anything that's unsecured, what's called unsecured debt, which is debt that's not attached to property, assets, land, so on and so forth. And then dealing with secured debt like mortgages, um, I don't know, mortgages, land, property, homes, so on and so forth. At the moment, go back to the last four, five, six months, we've, we've been winning approximately one case a month in relation to secured debt which is debt that's associated with assets and tax to assets. Um, we have engaged in our experience in dealing with solicitors, banks, debt collectors, receivers, liquidators, revenue, the state, county councils, the courts, the central bank, and the ODCE. The ODCE is the Office of the Director of Corporate Enforcement. So we've had engagements with, with all of these different personas and parties and corporations from time to time. They don't like what we do, and uh, they will do anything not to engage and deal with us because we educate people alongside ourselves to deal with them. And they don't like that when people become educators. And that's primarily, as I said, what we're focused on is educating people. Um, we just thought we'd highlight some of the more recent wins over the last two or three months. Um, at the, we go through them. We, we may or may not do a bit of detail on them, but um, we, the recent case we had, um, and. Gary, you might speak for a couple of minutes about this one. Um, 16th of July case number, there it is. A uh, solicitor was suing um, a friend of ours, a client of ours, and the case was struck out. Okay. Um, then early June, we had another case whereby uh, GE Money were suing a man for his family home, and he'd been working with us for six or eight months, and eventually what happened was they struck the case out. This was a case whereby um, he had been with New Beginnings, he has had solicitors, and we had discovered once he came to us, he was on his last chance saloon and he was just about to go in and they were more or less going to take the house off him. And we discovered that New Beginnings had never put in a defence for him into the courts after working with him for six or eight months. So we took up on the case and six months later, after writing a few letters, he appeared in the court a few times, they struck the case out. On the same day, I think there was another six cases thrown out of the courts, or sorry, withdrawn from the courts by GE Money and Stroke Pepper Mortgage, as I think they're called out. Then late June, um, we had another case whereby a man had been pursued for mortgage lands. I think the, it was in the region of 700, 800,000. And eventually then they also withdrew their case as well. That was EIB. Then <coughs> mid June, we had um, another case. I think this was in the district court with PTSB and they also withdrew their case after we asked them certain questions that they couldn't answer and they just withdrew the case. And then finally, this has back a couple of months ago, um, we had a case reopened that was, I think there was a judgment on that case, wasn't it? Already? Previously a judgment on it. Okay, um, do you want to elaborate on any of the cases, lads, or will we leave it at that? Yeah, we go 
one. Now, we'll, we'll apply through this because we're slightly behind schedule. Um, just some information for you. Um, the big challenge that all the financial institutions in the state face is educated people. Okay? That's from our perspective. Um, you start educating people and giving them knowledge, and they start asking difficult questions, and this is where the banks and the, even the courts, the judges, the solicitors, the barristers start to fall down. Just some basic information, and we won't get into the detail of this, just for, for information to put into your head. A promise to pay, um, a promise to pay created the credit line. So whatever promise to pay, this is in relation to mortgages and credit cards and all the rest of it. You, the people, created the credit the banks use to provide the finance. So basically, if you want to call it money, you are creating the money. The banks sold down these promises to pay a thing called securitization. Therefore, the banks don't have the right to sue. So any of the banks, now primarily, as far as we can ascertain, all the banks, all the credit card companies, all the debt was sold on, securitized. So basically, that brings it over to, it was sold to a third party. So the banks themselves don't have the right to sue you, in a nutshell. Now, it's an awful lot more complex than we're making it out to be, obviously. But that is the whole crux of the thing. That you basically, they shouldn't be suing anybody in this country. The banks, the barristers, the state, and the judiciary know this. They all know this. We've been in and out of the court several times ourselves as groups, individuals, and those people in the audience have done the same thing. And they all know it. The barristers, the solicitors, the state, the judiciary, they know this. It's a big scam. Okay. Right. Um, over the next couple of months, we will be releasing... <laughs> well, we have a book ready for release at the moment. It's called Irish Life and Me, and it tells the tale, and some people know some of this information already, of somebody that um, was involved with the bank and went through the motions of dealing with the bank, dealing with their solicitors, uh, dealing with all sorts of, I suppose, the institutions as well, and eventually the bank just faded away into the background and didn't want to sue the man. But this chronicles the tale of dealing with that specific <coughs> case, and the case is related to PTSD. But it gives the details of what happened, the letters that were sent, and so on and so forth. So it's a chronological, um, I suppose, story of what happened from one end to the other. We've subtitled it, Tales of the Criminal Cabal. So if you want to order a copy, you can do that now if you want, and we'll be releasing a free digital copy in the next week and a half, two weeks. Okay, so if you, uh, if you wanted to download a free copy, it'll be available in about two weeks on irishlifeandme.com. Okay, now what we've done is taken a couple of extracts from the book. This is just at the beginning of the book, and I'll just read them out verbatim here. The Wikipedia Free Online Encyclopedia ascribes the appropriate following meaning to the word exposure. Exposure is magic, the practice of revealing the secrets of, of magic to, the no, to non magicians. That is what the book aims to do to expose and to reveal their so called magic, i.e., the banks. Once any magic trick, illusion, or spell has been revealed, the magician loses their perceived ability or power over the audience. Exposing and revealing their magic takes patience, work, and concentration, which a lot of people here will already know. It requires that you be resolute, determined, and brave. Yes, bravery is required in your quest to expose and reveal their trickery. You will have to expose yourself to a certain extent. You will have to learn, which Aiden, I'm sure, would mind. Um, you will have to learn <laughs> how to not fear others knowing your business. In that way, you will have no fear of openly writing to those that are attacking you and copying your letters to all in any part that you deem appropriate and relevant to the matter in hand. But you'll see that delineated in the book that the letters are copied to as many parties as possible. Writing your letters as open letters is a cathartic process. It is a form of liberation and it frightens the hell out of banks, financial institutions and the state bodies. Okay. After all, they do not want people to know what they are doing behind the scenes. And equally, they do not want people to know that there are people out there who are no longer fooled by their magic and therefore no longer fear them or what they threaten. After all, it's only words on paper. It's not even a hill of beans. The people that would assume authority over you fear being exposed. Do you get that, lads? They actually fear you knowing what's going on in their head and what, what they're doing. They fear that their own ignorance of their own acts, codes, legislation, policies and procedures is exposed. They fear their criminal acts and actions are exposed. They fear being exposed to the law. 
and most of all they fear being exposed to the people for what they are and what they have become. They reside in fear and that is not a place to be. We write this textbook for all the people that want and wish to free themselves from the financial enslavement of the banks, the state and the public government that we have in place. We hope it assists you thus. Read, study and apply as you see fit and deem appropriate. Let us know how you get on by sending us a quick email. Finally, on this journey we discovered, this is the journey in, in terms of the book and the process of writing the book, we discovered that the death and duplicity and corruption within, the cor within corporate Ireland and the state of Ireland is quite horrific, in that the state, public and civil servants, idly stand by and watch on as the people of this island are being raped, robbed, pillaged and plundered of everything around them, including their families and their lives. It seems the state are prepared to bend over backwards for and in favour of large corporations, namely banks, to, deter to the detriment of the people. Okay? Right, this is just a, a quick, stop twitching me leg right. Irish Life and Me, this is just a quick comment we've had about the book so far, is a letter-by-letter letter journey into the depraved world of banking and state institutional corruption. A story that smells fresh of hellfire and brimstone, a fantastical tale. <laughs>